In this video, we're going to talk about what a class looks like in object-oriented design in PHP. You can see I have some code already typed up here on the screen. So I'm starting off with the word class and then the name of what I'm going to design. So this should be a thing. So I have the generic name as my class, but usually it would be something like this is a user or this is a video game character like a, a hero or an enemy. It could be a player. It could be a cart. It could be an order. It could be anything that you can name as a noun. You can also see that we start with a set of brackets. So the brackets begin and the end of the class. The next is that we have uh, declarations. And so the variable that we're creating here is called a property. And so the state of my class is, um, is a string. Other properties that you might use are like the name or password of a user, or the number of points, or the number of health points that a person has. In a class, you can also define functions. And so these are things like uh, update your password, or attempt to purchase an item, or print a message, or play a sound. And so any kind of verb is now what we would call a function, or they call these methods in object-oriented programming. Let's take a look at another example. This is a class called a car. So let's say I were developing a video game, and my car needs to have some properties, such as its color, or its engine status, is it running or not? Notice I use a strange keyword called private. If you forget to put the word private in, it becomes a public property, which means that uh, code from other parts of the program can access its color or its status as running or not. And so usually private is the method we would like to choose. The next function down below is called the constructor. So if I were to make a new car, for instance, uh, I called it Corvette, and I decided to create a new instance of this car, it would automatically receive the color uh, format here and it would not be running, it would be set to false. And so this, this function, the special function, runs every time that we create a new object. Here are two other functions that we could put into our car. We could say uh, print the color. So I could tell you what color my car is, and you can see that it is uh, using the function name and the word print color. I could also create a function that would change the status of the motor, whether it's running or not. Also, you might notice this strange word, this. So dollar sign this refers to the current car. You could change the word from this to myself, and the arrow means my color. All right, so now we're going to get some coding done. So you can see I have three apps on the screen. I have my MAMP server running. I've got a green um, indicator here, and they've got two green boxes here. So this means if I choose open my start page, my web browser, my default web browser shows up, and it says it's been installed, and if I have my page a little bit wider, I should see my website as an option at the top, and it will show me the index of my htdocs folder. Now over here on the left, I have the Eclipse program running, and you can see that I have all of these apps that have been created in the past, and they show up here in my web directory as local host. So I'm going to start a new project today, and we're going to develop some object-oriented code. So let's go to File, New, PHP, Project. I'm going to call this thing Unit 1, and then a hyphen, and Person Object is the subject here. So we're going to be programming a person in object-oriented programming. Okay, so we got this thing open. If I come over to here and refresh the page, I should see a new subject here. I click here, I have nothing actually on the page. So we need to come over here and start coding. The build path project and dot settings are all things from Eclipse that we can ignore. So we're only looking for files that have HTML and PHP extensions. All right, so now we're going to start creating a, an object for a user in our application. Let's do a right click on our folder for our project and choose new PHP file. So I'm gonna call this thing capital person.php and press enter. So a person object is the first thing we're doing. So there's the beginning of our PHP and there's the end. Now the first thing I need to do in creating a new class is to use the word keyword class. And I'm going to use the word person with a capital P. 
and a beginning and ending bracket. Now, the notice I use the exact same word here, person with a capital P, as the file name. And so that makes things work out really well in the programming language. So that's a convention that you should follow. A property now. The next thing we need to do is set the person's name. So I'm going to set a new property called private dollar sign name. Now the private thing will come into play later, but right now let you just let you know that uh, this word name can only be accessed between these two brackets. Nobody else outside of this code can see that word name. Let's give it one more property. Let's call it private age, and so that'll be a number. Now the first method that I'm going to create is a constructor. So let's type in public function and now I'm going to type in two underscores and look for construct. So what this means is this function will be called every time we create a new person. So double underscore construct can be uh, called automatically. Now I want to provide a string to this guy. So I'm going to put in a variable name n. And when I create a new person, I'm going to say this person, or this keyword might be the word to say myself. Myself has a property of name, and I'm going to set it to whatever the parameter dollar sign $n was. And then I'm going to echo a message. And let's see, you can see I'm using a HTML tag at the end to create a new line. So I create a new person and he tells us who his name is. So let's save this. Now I'm going to create another file and we're going to operate on this person. So let's go to new again, PHP file, and let's call this uh, person tester. Uh, just person test is good. All right, so in here, we're going to import the, uh, create, uh, this file I just made. So let's go require, and require once is actually preferred, and then the name person.php. So this is the file that was just created a minute ago. Now, as soon as I use this word require, I have all the methods and access to the person inside of that code there. So I'm going to make a new guy. Let's call him person1 equals a new and now when I type in PER, you can see that it recognizes that this is an object and it's telling me, please tell me a string here for dollar sign $n. Let's give this first guy's name Mark. And now when we run this code, we should be able to create a new guy named Mark. Let's create another one and let's call this thing um, Samuel. So now we have two people and it's going to give us two messages. Let's go over here on our code on the browser now. Refresh. You can see I have two different PHP files. If I click on person, nothing will happen. But if I click on person test, I will get two messages. It says, hello, I'm a new person. My name is Mark. So let's look at the code that was used in here. So the public function called construct was called and printed these two methods. All right, let's add some more functionality. So inside of my person class, I'm going to create another uh, function. And I'm going to say that this is, um, let's say we have a video game, and we're going to create a function called walk. For right now, I don't have any animation, so I'm just going to put in a text message. OK, so now I have this function called walk. Let's save it. Let's go back into our person test commands, and let's make person one walk. And let's say person1, forward arrow, and now my method shows up as walk. And let's save it. So now if I press the refresh key over here, it says I am walking. Now I really don't know who's walking, so let's come back and give a little more hint there. So, and let's change it to a third person. So we're going to say this arrow name is walking. So that should give us a little bit more details. So I'll refresh the page over here, and it says Mark is walking. We can also make a person two walk, of course. So we can say person two, forward arrow walk, and now we've got ourselves two people, and both of them are walking. Amazing, I know. Now we're going to come up with a few more methods. Let's say um, I'm going to come up with one called um, greeting. 
and let's say uh, we're going to echo and we're going to say hello and we'll save it again. So now over here if you wanted to make person one and we can say greeting we should be able to make him say hello. Okay, I'm going to pause the video. What I want you to do is I want you to create a couple more, more greetings. So let's uh, come up with some methods. How about formal greeting? We could come up with a function called that. And the goal here is to say, say it in British. So what would a British person say if they did a formal greeting? And let's call this one a Spanish greeting. And do you know any Spanish? Say it in Spanish. So pause the video and come up with a couple more methods and we can make them greet in different languages or different styles. Okay, I'm assuming you stopped and you typed out the code. Uh, if you want to see what I would do, let's take a quick browse through the coding here. Otherwise, you can skip ahead about two minutes and you don't have to watch me type. So I'm going to create the first one called Formal Greeting. And I'm going to create an echo statement that says, Good day to you, sir. You can address me as... And then I'm going to put my name in there again. So there's my formal greeting. And now if I did it in Spanish, I would do something similar. And so there's a couple more greetings. Let's go and test them out. If I were to make the person one say something in, what can I do? Person one. And he can do all of these methods now. Let's try a formal greeting and let's do person one and let's do him as a Spanish greeting. So now let's test those and run them and sure enough we have good day to you sir. You can address me as Mark or Olo. Uh, oh, hola, it's supposed to say hola. Me llamo Mark and uh, that would be our second greeting so let's go and fix that. Okay. Now before we stop typing here I want to make a couple more examples of what we would use in our actual application. So at the top here, I'm going to create another couple of private properties here. So private, and let's call this thing uh, your username and password. Before I can actually log in, I need to know what the password is going to be. So as a default, I'm going to create something in the constructor. So every single person is going to have the same username and password. I know that's not very realistic, but until we start working with databases and other more complicated things, this will have to suffice. So I'm going to say that this property called password is going to be automatically set to QWERTY. And so everybody in the system will have QWERTY as a password. We can also say this uh, pass or username is going to be equal to uh, Bob. All right. So we got Bob and QWERTY as our two properties. Now when we authenticate, we would create a function maybe called login. And your login is going to ask for two different uh, parameters. So I'm going to put in A and B with a dollar sign. So the A represents the username, the B represents the password. And we can find out if they created the, uh, or if they typed in the correct uh, function here if we do an if statement. So I'm going to say if the uh, first parameter, A, is double equal to this hyphen username, and let's do a double symbol there for and, and the second parameter is equal to this person's um, password. If that is true, then they have logged in properly. So we can say, uh, hooray, you've logged in. However, if they don't, let's do an ill statement and we'll say echo uh, something doesn't seem right. We'll say login failed. All right, so we got a logged in failed message and we have a success message. So we've created a new property, username and password. We've set that to be default, to be QWERTY and Bob. And then we have the login function, which takes both of those parameters and does a test on them. So let's see what that would look like in our actual uh, instances over here. So let's try to log in person two. So person two, forward arrow, and let's say login. 
So I'm going to pass in two parameters. I'm going to say uh, his first thing is his, uh, his username. So let's say for his username, he's going to put in the word Norman. And then for his uh, password, he's going to put in the word password1. And let's see if that works. And then it probably won't, so let's do person2 with a correct password. So person2 will log in again. And this time, Bob is the username and QWERTY is the password. So we should get a couple of messages over here now. So the first one says, something doesn't seem right about your username and password. Login failed. So that came from this line here, line 20. And then hooray, you're logged in came from the correct username and password over here. So examine how we did that. We're going to be creating something similar and uh, that would be our login function. So this video has run a long time now, but you've got yourself your first example of a person class. So here, here's what I'd like you to do to extend this. So up here in the uh, properties here, create uh, three new properties. So you can create things, uh, like I said here, I had age and username. What other kind of properties could you set? We mentioned in the earlier example, we could use the word salary or the, uh, the name of his uh, department that he works in or job title or his height and his weight. Any kind of property of a person. And then down here at the bottom, I'd like you to create three new methods. Now, all we are really doing is echoing things to the screen, but as you can see, we can pass in pr uh, properties and we can check to see what their values are. So create methods here uh, in the same mo mode that we did in the previous examples.